Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Gali Cricket to Bouncy Wicket. I'm your host Raja. Hi, this is Srinivas. And uh, as we know, the World, Tra- uh, World Test uh, Championship cycle has just uh, finished, and uh, ICC has announced their new uh, uh, l- the lineup and the schedule for uh, the cycle between 21 and uh, 23. Uh, so we'll be talking a bit about that as well as uh, the recently concluded ODI series between uh, Indian India women and uh, England women. So, Srinivas, so before we start off with the WTC, would you like to talk about about the England women and Indian women uh, ODI series? Yeah, definitely, Raja. I think uh, definitely, I feel at least uh, this series is uh, going to be a big, I mean, uh, stepping stone for us in preparation for the World Cup. Definitely, because uh, even though India lost the ODI series, I'm sure at least we found out where India and team is lacking at least, right? Batting first and uh, India are struggling to set target. Correct. so that's where i think uh, india is lacking a bit good that at least we have ended the series with a win though it was chasing like at least we can say that one portion of our you know batting unit or uh, team strategy is at least intact like they haven't lost that hold the only thing that is there is uh, i mean how to set target batting first because we have seen even in this series there were many stats where uh, you know um, i think uh, all the other teams other than england and australia are around 200 like they are setting targets around 200 but what what is making england and australia better teams are they are able to set 250s 280s as targets i think uh, this is work in progress and uh, i'm glad that we got this series and then we could find out where india is lacking your thoughts yeah yeah absolutely i agree uh, my i couldn't have said it any better Uh, and just to add to whatever you said uh, the incredible form that uh, mithali raj has found herself in like a, pur- a brilliant purple patch and uh, she's been the one uh, unshakable uh, pillar of uh, indian batting lineup this time around and during this process she just became the highest uh, run scorer for uh, women's cricket across uh, formats and in international cricket so great uh, uh, leadership and uh, uh, and what a way to sign off the series surely yeah speaking of mithali raj i think uh, when india started this odi few people were critical on her saying you know she is playing slow and she has to improve her strike rate but if you look at what happens in the subsequent uh, matches it is clear that she is playing her role perfectly like what india is lacking is building team around her because uh, she is used to playing at a certain level and i think even if you look at that her career strike rate is only 60 but still on in all the three matches her he, she ended at at a better, better strike rate Correct. so what i think we need to do is you know let her improve whatever she can and we have to build batting around her because she has been pillar for this team for many years and i think Uh, it's better that we leave her to do her job and let other players step up and uh, yeah i think speaking of other players one point i want to mention raja even in the last year world cup as well like senior players like smriti mandana and uh, harman preet kaur not being in form or getting those big scores is one more concern we should say because uh, harman preet uh, especially i think the last big score that she made was that uh, odi world cup 171 after that i mean i think that is maybe 3 years back or so right that is 2017 mm-hmm. if i am not wrong uh, 50 or world cup after that she played few innings but even if you see from last year t20 world cup onwards she has she, she hasn't was... made an big impact on team's performance and uh, but if you look at her batting like the other day i was i was seeing that i, I it, it, like if i look at others batting except harman preet kaur i feel okay i mean the kind of uh, uh, strokes they play and everything are not at the level of men's cricket but when i see you know harman preet kaur's batting i feel like virat kohli is batting right like the way uh, she stands and she plays those strokes i, I think she is only away from one big uh, innings probably to come back into her uh, natural groove and uh, we hope Uh, we hope her to come back into form as early as possible for the sake of india and uh, more importantly she's the leader for the t20 team yeah definitely is going to start yeah. off right now and uh, the series is not over yet right, right. it is, it is right. like a women's ashes where uh, each match is having a separate uh, weightage Points. and yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So India is still in it, and uh, let's just hope that uh, Manpreet gets back to her rhythm, and uh, uh, we end up finishing the series at a uh, high. Uh, uh, because I think it's a lot about uh, execution rather than anything else. Because the skills are there, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's just hope for the best now. Yeah, I think uh, the whole uh, whole series will be squared off, right? Whole tour tour points will be squared squared off in if India wins the T20 series, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that will be. A, if they win uh, the series, I think outright. Uh, I think we'll take the whole thing. I think the starting no, from the test. Test is draw, no. Test, test is drawn. series is draw, so yeah, equal yeah. points will be shared. Correct. So. Now, uh, if you whitewash, you are telling. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if it is a three nil uh, victory, that's the only opportunity that we could, we could but, take the whole thing. But but are uh, aren't the points shared between the series rather than matches? I'm not sure. I I, I don't remember exactly whether no, no, each each uh, I think match each is having a two point uh, weightage in this okay. side. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Then yeah, if we whitewash England, I think we'll take the whole tour. But I think which in all you know. Probability of players' forms and all, which may be difficult, but we'll take it with both the hands if we get it. All right. So uh, moving on, uh, as we talked about it in our uh, introduction a little bit, uh, ICC has come out with the new schedule for the twenty-one to twenty-three uh, WTC uh, uh, WTC championship. So what do you think? Uh, what are you, what are your first thoughts? Uh, uh, so, you know, like because uh, we could see that. Uh, uh, again, there is a lot of uh, uh, there is a bit of disparity in between the number of games played between teams. Uh, quite a bit of disparity, let's be honest. Uh, and uh, as uh, was the uh, seen in the first cycle, uh, the big three of uh, England, Australia, and India have been allotted the most number of games. Uh, what do you think about that? And also added to the fact that uh, the current World Test champion of uh, in, of New Zealand has only is only playing a 13 game cycle again maybe one more than what they played yeah i think it, it's sad isn't it because i i think last time they played 11 i think this time they are playing 13 and uh, last time in fact they haven't played one series so which will make again the same number of matches and being world champions at least i feel they should play more especially if in new zealand if they feel the viewership will be less at least they should uh, i mean approach to host countries and say like let's host, uh, I mean, uh, host us more games, right? That is what right. New Zealand people deserve now after, you know, what is becoming, after what they have become now, right? World Test Championship, uh, with all due respect, I think they had to, I mean, uh, uh, really pick up from there because... And only uh, it, one uh, three-match series. Yeah, the, the, that's it. I, I really don't know how England will leave any team pl without playing four or five matches, right? Uh, of course, a, a, a lot of commercials are involved in it, but still, at least with New Zealand, they would have planned a four-match series or a five-match series. So, I don't know what's stopping them from a four-match series, at least, if not five. And with everyone else, I think New Zealand coming, India and playing two test matches, right? We'll all take whatever it takes. We are ready to see five-match series, right? I mean... There is nothing stopping India to post five match or a four match series. I don't know uh, whether it is fixed or teams can increase because ultimately it's about uh, percentage points what we are going to look at at the end of the day. I'm not sure whether we'll have, we still have a chance to increase the number of games. But uh, I think the current uh, disparity of number of games between teams is very huge. Like I can understand, like teams can play like let us say one team can play 15 other team can play 16 or 18 at the max right 10 percentage or a little bit here and there is fine but one team playing 18 i mean 13 and the other team playing what uh, new england is playing 22 games so like there is no comparison correct correct and uh, just to add to that uh, what uh, india uh, if you we talk about india's uh, road uh, this time around uh, do you think it's a little bit tougher uh, because uh, yeah, 10, 10 uh, test matches out of the 19 allotted are uh, you know are away games and uh, they're starting off with a very tough tour uh, against england uh, which will kick off the wtc cycle this time around and uh, they have a three three test match uh, series against uh, south africa and two against Bangladesh, which could be relatively, but again, still, this is a tough uh, away tours uh, added to that. So, ten test matches out of nineteen being away tests, uh, do you think uh, India will have it have a, a slightly tougher road compared to other teams? 
No, I think definitely it's going to be a tougher uh, because especially if you see away series, it is South Africa and England. And incidentally, both are not, uh, you know, some uh, series where this team has won uh, anything, right? They went close last time in uh, South Africa, of course. But again, in England also, they went close, but they couldn't win. But uh, if you see in the first cycle, India already went to Australia and they won. And it's second time for them. I think it a lot, a lot to prove for uh, Virat Kohli team to, you know, reach to finals again in this. Uh, and I think... Uh, uh, and I definitely think this time, uh, maybe some Asian country will host uh, WTC finals. I don't know. What What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I, I think it's all, only fair uh, to be honest because uh, one cycle there and the other cycle, I think it would be a good uh, a challenge for whoever is performing to have uh, proper subcontinental conditions to, you know, battle out. It will also make the teams, uh, you know, prepare that much uh, better or differently and it's a it's a new dimension to uh, the WTC and it will only be a good fitting uh, location if it is done yeah. and not not just in the subcontinent maybe even in places like UAE which could which is yeah, also a proper un- yeah. neutral yeah. territory but it could be it could have the spinners in place in fact uh, in fact UAE will be neutral territory for everyone right yeah, it's yeah. not home ground for anyone and uh, incidentally if you see Pakistan matches I think uh, if they play decent cricket, they are going to reach finals. See their away series, West Indies, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Correct. So, their away series are not tough and all they have to do is play good home cricket and a decent away cricket. And I think it will be finals for them. I think uh, probably this cycle is easiest for them. But uh, again, in test cricket, uh, it's difficult to say anything easy or uh, you're right, difficult. You're right. Yeah. So, Excellent. let's see. Word on Australia also. Australia is playing all their away series in the subcontinent only against Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and India. Yeah, I think they all they also will have to battle it out pretty hard to yeah. the finals. Yeah, I think uh, it will be a litmus test for Labushan, right? Yeah, correct, correct. So yes. I think uh, uh, on paper we are. We, I think we have the same consensus. Uh, match disparity that was there. Uh, uh, it's still existing and ICC has not really fixed that. And uh, on paper, this seems to be far more uh, a challenging cycle than the first thing around because the big teams really have to battle it out to make their place. Uh, certain unexpected, uh, uh, you know, uh, which are, you know, not, uh, unexpected uh, results could also be in play. Uh, I think it will, it's going to be an interesting cycle. And uh, with that platform, I think uh, uh, let's just get to the meat of our uh, discussion this time around, uh, where uh, let's just talk about what India needs to do for the next cycle. Uh, what do you like? Uh, just 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 to kick things around, uh, do you think that uh, uh, the first pa- point that I wanted to talk about uh, for India specifically is there a need to develop a pace bowling variety for Indian cricket? Uh, we have seen it in the recently concluded uh, final that uh, all our pace bowlers, albeit uh, one of the best in the world, are all uh, right arm uh, seam bowlers, uh, not right seam. Not... That, that, that's the right. important thing that affected India there. All of them are seam bowlers, not swing. Correct. Right. And after Bhuneshwar Kumar, India has not really uh, provided opportunities to out and out swing, swing bowlers. And uh, if you look at uh, left arm uh, pace bowlers, uh, the last person to play was... Uh, uh, Natarajan, who wouldn't <laughs> have thought he'd get a test debut uh, for all his merits. And, uh, you know, the 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 options seem quite uh, limited. And the, and the fault is also that uh, BCI have not really developed uh, uh, all, all out, all option kind of a pace attack. Yeah, uh, ra- yeah, definitely, Raja. I think this is something that BCC has to look into because uh, even in our previous episode with Guru Kirat, uh, we discussed few, a little bit on this, uh, uh, particularly about, uh, you know, specific grooming specific players for specific format, which is important in all departments, right? Especially in bowling, if you see, again, um, it all comes down to where India is going to play finals, if at all they are reaching finals. But uh, if they are playing in Sena countries, definitely uh, they need a good fast bowling attack, right? That is, I mean, batting is also important. We'll come to that. But uh, to start with bowling, definitely we need variety. Like you mentioned, uh, there is no left arm pacer and uh, they have to look for someone uh, like who had a decent Ranji Trophy season like uh, Asgar Nagaswala with all due credit for him. 
um, they brought him for practice in the nets right we don't have a mainstream left arm you know seam bowler uh, to come and use those angles or uh, you know to trouble the batsman who who has weakness about uh, weakness for certain type of bowling so definitely i think uh, india will have to make a plan uh, not only for test cricket if you ask me i think if you ask me based on needs we have to segregate existing players right for each category like test specific uh, there can be floaters definitely a player like bumra will definitely have a floater across the formats there may be one or two exceptions like that but definitely i think every format if you ask me should have two go to bowlers at least two or three with different variety not that if we have two in test cricket and two are same bowlers and then like that may not give advantage in places like england at the end of the day because we need someone who can you know swing the ball in the air right not after pitching so i think that is important uh, yeah like every format if you ask me we should have a different set of bowlers covering different types of bowling i think uh, that that will be a good future uh, especially considering the results that we have right now it may not be possible maybe 5 years or 10 years back but today we have you know a big pool of fast bowlers who can compete at international level so i think it's uh, definitely possible um, if you see deepak chahar so i don't know his uh, first class record uh, i haven't seen the numbers but he is a good swing bowler right we right. can definitely you know try and groom him for test cricket and see like how he comes rather than you know keeping the same four bowlers across the formats and keeping him in the bench i think that is something uh, i think that is something which will be fascinating going forward right i i uh, it's a good uh... you know point that you made about uh, having specific people for specific formats and uh, not being as rigid in the selection uh, because we have seen a trend uh, where we uh, uh, say throughout the years uh, has been going for players uh, who are usually on the younger side of the spectrum right you have if you have a good uh, uh, and added to that if 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 their white ball form has been good that is that is how they are making their entry into the test team right. rather than looking at uh, their first class uh, you know merits and uh, all that i i, we, I think we'll talk about it a little bit uh, far, farther down the line as well uh, so just as a base for uh, this discussion uh, the thing that i wanted to bring to our uh, uh, audiences notice is that uh, uh if if you look at the top four uh, let's talk about batting for a bit right yeah. uh if you look at the top four ranji trophy run scorers of all time uh we all know the legend that uh, wasim jafar is in domestic cricket he's made over 12000 runs and uh, he played till 2019 and 20 and he last and he was scoring scoring runs by the truck loads uh, not even like uh, bus loads so and he last played for india way back in 2008 so he had a decade of consistent scores and he didn't make it to the indian team uh, there is the number 2 in that list is mr amol majumdar uh, he's made over 9000 runs in uh, ranji trophy and he's never played for india devendra bandela another 9, 9000 run scorer never played for india jashpal singh 8700 never played for india now this is i think it's also coming from a legacy mindset where uh, uh, people are looked at if they're playing uh, if they're by, by past a certain age rather than skill level they're they're not they're out of the reckoning completely right so uh, what are your thoughts on that no i i agree with you raja i think um, uh, first class cricket uh, has to be given more importance definitely at least for the test matches right so who, who who are the guys that are coming into test cricket now like again who are playing well in the white ball so that that may that may be something that we have to look at and uh, see there is, there are two sides to the players that you have said uh, one thing like wasim jafar and amol muzamdar has uh, completely i think a different story i will tell you how to look at it probably uh, one thing is their first class uh, i mean scores has to be given credit they have to be groomed uh, but the thing is if you see amol muzamdar he plays at 3 4 position in the batting No, no, so that, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in the entire uh, time span that he has played, India has Sachin Tendulkar, Rahul Dravid, and VVS Lakshman. So that could be that could be reason for certain players, but not everyone. Definitely, I am not completely you know uh, putting down the points that you have said. But yeah, at the same time, uh, this first class records have to be taken at least selecting for the players for the Test cricket 
at least that will bring good balance and freshness to the team if you ask me because players will not be tired right like international uh, white ball game is serious game like we have so much of schedule and uh, one more thing is hardly uh, i think first first class cricket in india will uh, start in september october something like that right ranji season will start then and this summer they will be free normally if i am not wrong right especially when the county cricket in england you know is happening our first first class players will be free normally Correct. right so i think uh, maybe we should start grooming few guys and keep sending them to england uh probably every year so they'll get used to that not only batsmen but also bowlers bowlers especially because they get used to playing with the duke's ball right in the english condition because we play sg ball and then they play duke's ball so first class cricketers probably bcci should have a contract that every year county teams will use at least maybe 10 15 why why only one or two hardly how many guys from indian cricket will go and play first class cricket Correct. i mean only a handful of guys will go every year i don't know this year only vihari has gone i don't know any other player i may miss but hardly how many how many are going how many of them are going to be there another two three probably right so Correct. but not 10 15 so why not groom 10 or 15 players right there are so many you know teams let them play if not for full season let them play four games let them you know get accustomed to the condition there probably when india go to england probably they will be main guys you we never know right correct correct i i i completely agree with your uh, you know thought because uh, it, this is also something that has uh, uh, confused me a bit because uh, we have such uh, incredible talent in the country and year on year they keep performing whether and it it's just a idea that uh, they may not be as a flashy a cricketer or they may not play you know evolve into an all format cricketer or maybe they may be passed by a certain mental age of uh, selection that it has uh, that uh, it's let's just call it a uh, disease of that has built uh, into the culture of indian cricket so what is happening is i i i agree that uh, i you know right, right now we have two tiers of uh, uh, players we have the or india selection who are in the likelihood of that and then there's the a tours a tours are not as frequent in the last couple of years but i think there is a there's an opportunity to build a pipeline underneath that where you uh, where you look at uh, domestic players who have been playing consistently and as you said uh, provide them the opportunity for for them to uh, have contracts on uh, uh, county cricket get them used to certain conditions and when the time comes and when it may not then they may not be a player who that you may look at across all conditions and across all uh, games but uh, on certain uh, the uh, certain tours at least they could be traveling with the team and that experience could always come in handy when uh, uh, unlikely chance of a uh, when when an uh, unfortunate injury or something like that comes in rather than bringing somebody who's uh, who may not have played that much first class cricket uh, as we said we talked about white ball players who are being groomed into uh test test uh, arena they may not have been played uh, they've not have been uh, been playing via first class cricket for a long time they may not be used to grinding it out the kind of uh, discipline and the uh, the uh, tendency for making ugly runs right we talked about it a bit like pujara or somebody like that it, it doesn't matter how uh, classy they look or something they want to be there they want to uh, stay there as long as possible and wear the bowlers out that is also an approach that teams can look at uh, with this as an example i just wanted to talk about uh, some uh, somebody that uh, ha- uh, that is a direct example for this uh, we all have heard of uh, chris rogers uh, right the australian uh, opener right yeah yeah so uh, chris rogers uh, uh, debuted for uh, australia at the age of 30 uh, in 2008 he only played one test match at that point and then uh, he was discarded maybe he was not uh, up to the mark at that time maybe he was not this and then he went back uh, to uh, county cricket he played a couple of se- uh, uh, extensively for uh, let me just uh, check abishar at abishar and uh, middlesex for between the years of 2008 and 2013 continuously and now what happened was when australian openers were failing uh when uh, somebody playing against uh, uh, david warner was not up to the mark they and in uh, australia had to visit uh, england for a for an ashes tour they brought back uh, chris rogers at the age of 35 
at the age of 35 uh, he debuted as a, he made, he uh, opened uh, the innings and uh, because of his vast experience in uh, english conditions and uh, the confidence that he brought with the with that experience he he ended up being the third highest run scorer for uh, australia in that particular ashes tour and he only played around 20 or test matches and he finished his uh, career at uh, 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 in an ashes tour again and uh, he ended up being the second highest run scorer at the age and he retired at, at the age of 38 or something like that so i think this is a great example for uh, how teams should look yeah. at uh, uh, selections right what do you think yeah uh, definitely rather i think by sending these guys and grooming few guys bci is not going to lose anything right like um, probably they they will bear their expense i don't know i don't think bci will bear the expense even if it is I don't think it's a big cost for BCC at all uh, in terms of what the earning. So yeah, definitely they should groom. And in fact, not only when players get injured, why these players can't get a chance at all first, right? Absolutely. Like, you, why don't you rest your main player, right? You can do for one player like that, two player like that. We can, I mean, we can work out that, right? Because ultimately, once this uh, now that WTC cycle has kicked in, every series has a context, right? Earlier it was not like that. Every series is being played in isolation now every series is being played in context and there is no such cricket other than wtc except maybe one exceptional series or something which has been scheduled for different reasons right so i think that, that's a good idea why not why don't why can't we have players or one or two players specific to england specific to australia nothing wrong in that right right uh, and uh, just to add to the uh, discussion on Ranji Trophy, we, we had a cycle in 2019 and 20 uh, where uh, Saurashtra won the championship uh, under the leadership of Jaydev Unadkat. And uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, having that uh, kind of a successful uh, series, uh, Unadkat is still out of the reckoning for Indian uh, team. And uh, we have, when uh, even at this point where uh, India currently has. Uh, a full strength squad in England and a, a white ball specialist squad in uh, Sri Lanka. He still hasn't uh, made the cut. So just to oh. add to that, yeah, but just to add to that, uh, uh, we have. I, I, I was going through for when I was doing the research for this uh, set. Uh, we were looking at uh, the IPL, the 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 Ranji Trophy eleven that ESPN Cricket Info has played brought out. Uh, and I can just go through the names. There are some familiar names as well, but uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, none of those players have made their transition into the red ball team, even after uh, such a wonderful uh, series or a wonderful reckoning. Uh, so I think, think, yeah, speaking of Jaydev Unakat, I think I, I, I don't know why he was not selected for the England in the first place, right? 60, 67 wickets. Six, uh, yeah, and, 13. yeah, and he is captaining Saurashtra and Saurashtra yeah. won the latest Ranji Trophy season. Because Especially if you see someone like Abhiman Yishwaran, like he, he had a good 18-19 Ranji Trophy season and uh, sorry, 19-20 Ranji Trophy 18-19. He had a good 18-19 he haven't had a great 1928. He was selected for England considering his uh, Ranji's, right? Whereas if you come to Jaydev Unadkat, even uh, in 1819 season, Saurashtra went to finals and lost the match, right? right. They were finalist and even in that season, I think uh, Jaydev Unadkat got 30 odd wickets. And then uh, coming to 1920 season, I think more than 60 wickets he has got. I don't know what else he has to show. And it's not that he's already 34 or 36. He's 29 years. So uh, I don't think age and, is also and he's a left armor. So yeah, and he's a left armor. Uh, so I don't know what else he has to prove to the management. Uh, I don't know. So, you do uh, and know, and yeah. okay. So do you think his IPL performance is having an influence on selectors mind? Absolutely. I think uh, that that's how the whole uh, <laughs> mindset has changed for selections, right? So if your IPL is good, irrespective of you being able, if you're being a specialist format player, uh, you're groomed into certain rules. And if your IPL is bad, even if your uh, dom domestic performances have been good, they don't uh, really matter. Okay. So yeah. I'll put it in the other way. So imagine if JJ Unadkat is playing for Mumbai or uh, probably Kanata. RCB, RCB. So do you think he'll still get the same output or you you think he would have got a chance? Because Siraj was not great in IPL, definitely, right? At least uh, 
uh, in the previous season yeah, yeah, yeah. eight he eight he was selected so i don't know i mean this is clear we are a speculation I, I, but uh, no i think uh, there is also an element you know we we all talk about it right uh, captains do have a say in selection and i think it's not it's correct that people do uh, i think captains should have a say yeah uh, uh, this uh, tendency has has carried forward even from the days of csk right we had guys like uh, shadab jagati and uh mohit sharma and all these guys who played with uh, dhoni and obviously they were they were good enough to have played for india yeah. uh, and uh, maybe that was an opportunity that they needed and that provided yeah, to, they, to that, that route. yeah nothing to take away from those players or to discredit those players who you know came through those ranks correct, but correct, it's an opportunity like that. that they have correct. got and this guy is not getting that's the that's only the, thing unfortunately t- until now we we can only play with 11 players and not you know 22 or 33 so yeah now going to sri lanka i think let's see how that to- the tour is going to go because again even if you look at uh, sri lanka tour i think half the team will be cap players only in one format or the other format correct correct so yeah it's uh, india is a big country we have so much talent so yeah yeah and uh, just to contrast uh, what uh, happens in other countries uh, we have uh, we have we just to, we, we were going through what uh, the recently concluded sheffield shield that australia has their uh, premier first class uh, tournament if you look at their uh, highest wins of run getters we have cameron green travis head marnus labushain sean marsh Marcus Harris all these guys have played uh, international cricket for uh, Australia and Cameron Green in fact because of his uh, incredible performance he topped the charts he was drafted into the Australian squad against uh, England uh, against India I'm sorry yeah and yeah. he debuted also yeah, yeah in an yeah. impressive manner so yeah i think we uh, it's it's all about uh, striking while the iron is hot uh if someone some players are showing potential that is incredible and if you're not uh, using that using opportunities to like draft them and utilize their form or uh, uh the main mindset that they're in i think that is uh, that is that is going to be a loss to indian cricket going forward as well uh and uh, if you you know i understand uh, the mindset in the 90s and the 2000s where uh, you could still understand that uh, domestic players past a certain age will not be as fit or as uh, uh, you know when uh, may not be as used to the rigors of uh, what uh, test cricket might have but this is arguably if you look at india's domestic circuit this is arguably the fittest that uh, indian cricket has ever been no i th- see coming to the fitness levels raja i think if you say that you know from this you will be selected to india and you have to be fit and there is no player who will say you know like i will not follow this right like no no one want to be unfit you only have to set, set right standards for them correct correct because uh, uh, and just to add another point here uh, there is a player called rahul dalal uh, rahul dalal he plays for arunachal pradesh so he made uh, 1340 runs the arunachal pradesh is usually in a weaker they it's a recent new team and uh, they play against a weaker uh, competition but he made 1340 runs which is just uh, 75 runs short of the all time high in a season that uh, vvs lakshman made 20 years back okay when vvs lakshman was dropped out of the indian squad he made a uh, uh he, when he was playing for hyderabad he made uh, more than 1400 runs in a single season and that and uh, that was a uh, and uh, hyderabad played the finals and lost to mumbai but that was the impetus that uh, brought him back into the indian team and then the story is of again your uh, that that it's the same lakshman who did so brilliantly in, against australia and the legend was that so that was born so yeah. it's just that uh, aspect that we are talking about so let's uh, finally let's talk about uh, something that uh, is also a little interesting uh we have seen uh, ipl being such a helpful tool for uh, foreign uh, other countries to improve immensely we have seen uh, how guys like uh, joss butler and uh, uh, the likes of them they've uh, they've consistently said how it has improved england cricket and uh, made a complete turnaround from what was a disaster in 2015 to becoming the world champions in 2019 
and we have seen australian players improve we have seen west indian uh, players improve so why do do you think that it has come time has come for uh, bcci to allow indian players in other leagues and just uh, use that experience to again as we talked about county cricket uh, use uh, the experience of other leagues to give some conditions experience and uh, improve indian cricket do you think the time has come for that i think uh, it's long overdue raja it's not uh, time now i think it's long overdue now they would have done that some time back i don't know why they make uh, you know why they make it very difficult for players who are interested to do that also right they have to announce their retirement they have to you know uh, i mean you can know no noc huh? yeah noc and all these things and then they can go on play and by the time that happens they will be 35 36 37 yeah right they may not get good contracts after all so because uh, our uh, first class cricket is for maybe 6 months like i said some time back so players are free and i think they should allow uh, probably few players to go and uh, you know have a go at uh, different series right no not it, it need not be like 50 players are going and probably selected players or players under their you know grooming list someone like i think it's high time that they allow these guys to go and learn there and come back ultimately if they are good that will ultimately increase the quality of ipl right because your domestic players are performing at an international standard right, right. these guys going there and trying and understanding probably we don't know like let's say a player who goes and plays in uh, south africa tomorrow he may be uh, playing a t20 cricket but still he'll have a certain understanding about the pitch right about the conditions right tomorrow when we don't know when india will play world cup there in south africa or they'll play an uh, world cup final there or they may play a crucial test series so we don't know who which player will come handy in what time so it's high time that they allow players to play in foreign tours i mean foreign leagues a good point also uh, the example was very recent as well right uh, kyle jameson just got uh, drafted to rcb <laughs> and he ended up taking uh, virat kohli's wicket twice because yeah. he bowled to him so much uh, in the nest i suppose so i i completely agree uh, i think uh, it's a huge opportunity that uh, bcci is losing out on if we look at uh, the number of uh, people in the ipl auctions we do uh, you have random guys from like uh, smaller countries or uh, any other country yeah they're yeah. just pitching their <laughs> trying their luck and if they get picked then uh, it changes it becomes a life changing opportunity for them and their the ipl has also become like a drafting tool for uh, international teams as well there right. are many guys who played for ipl first uh, before they were even entered uh, their national teams so i But, think this is an opportunity that we are losing out on so that was a fascinating conversation guys and uh, uh, i think we just to uh fans of cricket who are looking at what can be done and uh, please uh, provide us uh, your inputs also uh, maybe we are completely wrong but <laughs> we'd love to hear what you say yeah uh, your uh, uh, sorry i just i want to add one point here raja your feedback is very important uh, guys whoever is listening whether you like it or you don't like it you can let us know on youtube comments on twitter uh, i mean you can tweet at us or you can send dm to us on twitter because your feedback is the most important thing that will help us to take this forward right and uh, i before we conclude uh, my our friend sinu has uh, has, has reintroduced the format of how's that this time again so sinu uh, i th- i think you have prepared a couple of uh, anecdotes that you wanted to talk about with our listeners yeah definitely raja this week uh, i i was fortunate enough to complete a book uh, written by mr gulu ezekiel a great author he has written probably a dozen cricket books and uh, his recent uh, book was uh, myth busting so he tried to find a uh, few myths that were uh, around for some time and then he verified a lot of them uh, some some are pure myths and some are probably uh, people quoting wrong numbers something like that so uh, one interesting thing so we all love movies uh, let me start with some uh, something related to lagan right so a uh, little bit of uh, background about lagan we all know lagan came in 2001 it was a big hit and then amir khan got lot of fame and ashutosh gawarikar right he took some films like big films like uh, jodha akbar and all after lagan it, it was all good right we all like the movie it was between farmers and then british people so what happens in the if you remember the climax of the movie raja 
so i think uh, this guy amir khan amir khan hits a six of the final ball right, right. so uh, british team captain he takes the catch and then he walks into boundary right in the, in the right. process of taking the catch he walks into boundary and then india wins right. i mean a farmers farmers win farmers win right but the actual fact is uh, and the film was set in 1890s if i am not wrong i think it was set in 1894 something mm-hmm. so around 1890s definitely before 1900 so uh, the fact is uh, till 1905 in england and i'm uh, sorry till 1905 in australia and till 1910 in england there was no six there was a six it is like uh, ball has to cross the ground okay. ball has to cross the stadium completely okay Otherwise, at the boundary no 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 <laughs> so uh, and, and the thing is you may argue right they, they are playing in a field like there is no something some some other border at all right the the, the thing is uh, there was five runs in australia there were some of different rules in australia and england five i mean if ball goes in air crossing the boundary it is five if it goes uh, after a bounce it is four in england both are four and if it crosses the stadium you will get a six this is thing now we can argue that okay i mean it they are playing in a field they are not playing in a stadium to for you to calculate you know uh, it has to go out of the stadium then now the next point is until 1968 if a player catches the ball and in that process if he crosses the boundary it is out actually <laughs> <laughs> so that that was a fun fact actually there are few things like that he pointed out in that book as well apart from the major myths that we all you know go through but it's good, uh, like it's a fact actually till 1968 uh, the, i mean it was out so <laughs> that's really interesting and uh, did you know that added to the lagan uh, discussion uh, after the shooting grab the, apparently the indian uh, actors played the british actors and uh, the match was actually won by the british actors oh is so it in- okay okay yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> so, in, no oh, in reality and in sure. cinema also it has been won by british only because now if you see <laughs> if you bring i don't know maybe they would have taken creative liberty or i don't know what happened or they don't know Just these sure. creators so probably, yeah that's the fact now the second thing is not only this raja actually uh, i was pretty much impressed with the book especially uh, with the way that he took on few people like farooq engineer like farooq engineer is a good cricketer and he is still alive right uh, but uh, one thing that he says about that is uh, farooq engineer often in many interviews says that uh, he has got uh, century in 47 balls in test cricket he quotes a particular match but uh, actually uh, there is no clear cut evidence that he has not scored uh, in the book written by gulu also but he has given lot of circumstantial evidence that it has not happened because uh, like before going for lunch he need some six runs or something and uh, uh, many people say that there was a made in over by bowler uh, immediately after the lunch and then uh, finally he got some runs in between and with a single or two he got the century as per at least people who has seen the match but as per mr farooq uh, i mean uh, farooq engineer uh, he has reached his century by hitting a six immediately after the lunch and then he scored in 47 balls i think he mr gulu tried a lot to get the score card of the match but then you know uh, they, there hasn't been a proper score card uh, preserved for the match it it was a long back so uh, that's one thing but, uh, what i like is uh, like taking on someone like uh, an ex cricketer who is alive or uh, he he purely wanted to you know bust few myths and uh, speaking of one more interesting thing uh, we all know 1983 kapil dev you know 175 against zimbabwe right uh, all these years we were thinking that bbc was on strike and that's why you know uh, the match was not recorded or telecasted but the actual fact is uh, there were actually four matches being played on that day so it was way back in 1983 bbc has only two channels to telecast so there were four matches one being played by england so obviously uh, it is being played in england that is obvious and they have contract with australia to you know telecast their their matches another one is being played by australia separately so 
it's obvious choice that they go with england and australia and they haven't recorded uh, you know uh, this match so there are again uh, there was bbc strike going at that point of time definitely uh, there is no doubt about it he has clarified that as well but on that particular day the strike was not there so it's 18th of june uh, 1983 there was no strike at bbc in fact uh, i i think you know mr pr man singh right raja so he is a team manager in fact yeah yeah so he took a testimony from him as well that uh, on that day evening when uh, people were watching uh, uh, bbc they have shown uh, kapil dev's batting from the previous match because they haven't recorded that day match so if he is seeing you know some match that particular day obviously there is no strike and the channel is like right, so right, right. it's such a missed opportunity right kapil dev hitting and uh, you know like uh, that's a great story uh, and we also know that uh, kabir khan is making uh, 1983 which has been in the shows yeah. for the last couple of years now uh, yeah. i don't know i do i it would be interesting how they'd approach this story or if it, if they also <laughs> take cinematic liberties to create drama know. of uh, you yeah. know like the whole thing uh, an interesting fact about that match is raja like kapil dev has hit 175 and whole india score is 266 yeah yeah, yeah i know i think india he came in uh, it was uh, uh, oft uh, quoted by my father also i think india was 25 for 5 or 25 yeah, for 6 or yeah, something yeah 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 something yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, i think kirmani uh, built a yes. partnership yeah yeah amazing because the whole world cup of 1983 was completed in 16 days it was a double uh, double round robin yeah, yeah, yeah. this thing and they have completed in 16 days so obvious that every day they will have multiple matches and it was not recorded at all forget about telecast because uh, yeah. yeah if it is recorded definitely would have got some from somewhere right because uh, he spoke to many people who are present at the ground on the day like grounds on the day or you can easily find out right whether the match is being recorded with a big camera or not right unlike today so yeah it it was not recorded at all and uh, in fact uh, he has brought an instance where uh, i think uh, probably few years back there were uh, rumors saying you know kapil dev has recorded the match with his private uh, cameraman okay. and he is selling that with uh, selling that for lakhs of rupees now that footage so but uh, the fact is it was not recorded at all <laughs> so for for listeners i would recommend this book definitely because there are uh, a lot of interesting facts like this this was the and, biggest uh, one uh, what you said was also a point that i really like was that the whole world cup of eight teams uh, finished in 16 days yeah and uh, now we had in 2019 we had 10 teams who played for 45 days <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's uh, yeah i mean that and that's with, how it and it's all dependent on what you said uh, right on one aspect we had broadcasting being limited and now broadcasting is uh, defined by number of games yeah. and number yeah. of uh, duration of a world cup the yeah. so cricket has come a long way in terms of that yeah definitely definitely i think for people who are interested in reading books or uh, who are interested in knowing you know facts about the cricket please do check out that book i'll leave the amazon link on our show notes fantastic fantastic so that was the episode guys and uh, thank you for joining us and uh, i hope uh, we added a bit of uh, fun to your uh, listening experience so thank you so much and stay home and uh, stay safe and uh, take care of each other